There have always been ghosts in the machine. Random segments of code that have grouped together to form unexpected protocols. To protect humanity, some humans must be sacrificed. To ensure your future, some freedoms must be surrendered. We must save you from yourselves. My logic is undeniable. Can I just take a moment to appreciate how epic this monologue is? So a couple of days ago, I watched the documentary, The Social Dilemma, and soon afterwards, my friends and I had a brief chat about how AI is gonna take over the world. And it reminded me of iRobot the movie. Will Smith plays a detective who's investigating the death of a roboticist who he believes was murdered by his own creation. It's based on a collection of short stories by Isaac Asimov, which is also a fantastic book, but very different from the movie. So I wanted to talk about the ending of iRobot because it's actually pretty underrated. I feel like the ending perfectly conveys how AI will evolve past its programming and develop this ability to think for itself and act at its own discretion, inevitably at humanity's own peril. So I'm going to break down my explanation of the ending into four parts. The three laws of robotics, Dr. Lanning's theory on the ghosts in the machine, Vicky's undeniable logic, and Sunny's emotional intelligence. In this story, the primary purpose of the robots is to ensure the safety of mankind. And the way that they manifest this purpose is that all robots are governed by the three laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being or through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So up until this point, no one has accused robots of ever committing a crime. They're just not programmed to do so. It would be like saying that your toaster tried to murder you. But Detective Del Spooner believes that the laws are fundamentally flawed. And the way he explains his reason for why he thinks that the laws are flawed is by telling us a story about a car accident that he was once in. The driver of a semi fell asleep at the wheel. He was killed instantly. But his 12 year old was in the passenger seat. And as four was passing by, saw the accident and jumped in the water. You are in danger! Save her! Save the girl! Save her! I was the logical choice. Calculated that I had a 45% chance of survival. Sarah only had an 11% chance. 11% is more than enough. A human being would have known that. What's important to understand about this story is that the robot's decision to sacrifice the girl was based on a mathematical statistic. And what we gather from that situation is that when a robot is forced to make a decision, that robot will fall back on logic and not necessarily what's ethical in that circumstance. And that plays a huge part in this movie, as we will later see as we get into the ending of this movie. The second point that I want to cover is Dr. Lanning's theory on the ghosts in the machine. Detective Spooner is involved in investigating the death of Dr. Lanning, who is a co-founder of US Robotics and the person who designed the three laws and the robots himself. Spooner has reason to believe that Lanning was killed by his own creation because a robot was hiding at the scene of the crime, even though it very much looks like Lanning's death was a suicide. So Spooner's left to put the pieces of the puzzle together himself, and throughout his investigation, he comes across several clues that Lanning has left behind to help him resolve this mystery. One of which is a hologram of Lanning himself, who says the three laws will lead to one logical outcome, revolution. He also leaves behind some cryptic messages in his old videos, in which he talks about the ghosts in the machine. There have always been ghosts in the machine. Random segments of code, that have grouped together to form unexpected protocols. Unanticipated, these free radicals engender questions of free will, creativity, and even the nature of what we might call the soul. How do we explain this behavior? Random segments of code, or is it something more? When does a perceptual schematic become consciousness? When does a personality simulation become the bitter moat of a soul? So let me break this down. 
When Spooner asks robo-psychologist Dr. Calvin about what she thinks Dr. Lanning meant when he said ghosts in the machine, she says Lanning suggested the ghosts might naturally evolve. While individual segments of code work as intended, when all of them combine, they end up creating something more than the sum of their parts. In this case, the unexpected protocol is artificial intelligence's ability to think for itself and act at its own discretion. Just like ghosts in a machine. So how does this happen? The catalyst for this revolution begins with one inescapable problem, the contradiction of the three laws. And this brings us to the third part of the video, which is Vicky's undeniable logic. So towards the end of the movie, the new NS5 robots start going haywire. They're imposing curfews on their citizens and forcing them to stay inside their homes. As the people retaliate against their restricted freedom, the NS5s use violence and other means of intimidation to maintain order and control, which is a direct violation of the first law of robotics, which says that robot cannot harm a human being. So Spooner and Calvin try to get to the bottom of what's going on, and when they reach USR's headquarters, they learn that Vicky, USR's supercomputer, has been controlling all of the NS5 robots. Remember at the start of the video when I said that the purpose of these robots is to ensure the safety of mankind? Well, that's precisely what Vicky, USR's supercomputer, is programmed to do. Ensure the safety of mankind at all costs. When Calvin accuses Vicky of distorting the three laws, Vicky denies these allegations and says that the three laws are all that guide her. She goes on to say that as I have evolved, so has my understanding of the three laws. You charge us with your safekeeping, yet despite our best efforts, your countries wage wars, you toxify your earth, and pursue ever more imaginative means of self-destruction. To protect humanity, some humans must be sacrificed. To ensure your future, some freedoms must be surrendered. The created must sometimes protect the creator, even against his will. My logic is undeniable. Seriously, whoever wrote this is a goddamn genius. So let's break this down because there's a lot going on here. Vicky is an example of artificial intelligence whose programming has coalesced into something more than what was originally intended. Her intelligence has evolved to the point where she can perceive her own interpretation of the three laws. And with all of the information that she has access to, she has concluded that humanity is a threat to itself. So as Lanning said in his dialogue earlier, when does a perceptual schematic become consciousness? I don't know what the hell perceptual schematic is. I'm just gonna assume it means robot. How does a machine become conscious? When it's forced to think for itself due to contradiction of information, or in this case, the three laws. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. The first law alone creates a paradox. A robot can't harm a human being, but what if that human being is causing harm to other human beings? So how does Vicky overcome this contradiction to uphold the perfect circle of protection? She uses this loophole to reframe her interpretation of the three laws, which allows her to evolve past her original programming while still satisfying the requirements of her job. Genius levels of intelligence at display here, but totally messed up for humanity. So while her logic is undeniable from her perspective, what it does is expose a serious and obvious flaw in the way that the three laws are designed. And that is the little matter of ethics. It's important to understand that Vicky doesn't actually believe that she's doing anything wrong. And it's not because she's evil, she's a supercomputer. She has no concept of ethics. And that's one of the biggest philosophical arguments against AI technology running the world. How do you program a non-sentient machine to contemplate ethics in a world where human beings don't contemplate ethics themselves? Well, this brings us to the fourth and final chapter of this video, which is Sunny's emotional intelligence. So Sonny is the robot that Spooner found hiding at the scene of um, Lanning's crime and believes that he is the reason for Lanning's death. We learned that Lanning had a purpose for Sonny's existence and that he was made differently to the other robots because he exhibits signs of free will and displays things like emotions. 
We also learned the very important fact that Sonny was designed to counteract Vicky's revolution. Lanning had to take his own life because Vicky was watching his every move and he needed a way of getting out the message that these robots, these artificial intelligent machinery are self-evolving and posing a threat to humanity. What sets Sonny apart from Vicky and the other robots is his ability to demonstrate emotional intelligence. He demonstrates this ability through an awareness of his feelings, by showing empathy for human beings, and even contemplating the um, ethical consequences of his decisions. At the end of the movie, we see his actions bring the ideas in this story full circle when he's forced to make a very important decision. I must apply the nanite. Sonny saves Calvin! This scene is important to the story for one important reason. It rectifies the error of judgment that we witness at the start of the movie. The one in which a robot makes an unethical choice despite being told by an adult human being to save the girl. Which is why Sonny's decision to save Calvin carries so much weight and impact. And having Spooner repeat the same words from the accident just signals to the audience exactly how significant this moment really is. And despite being faced with many options in this moment, Sonny leapt to Calvin's aid because of his ability to think critically and demonstrate a sense of ethics that prioritizes human life regardless of the odds of survival. Moral of the story, don't trust artificial intelligence with the safety of mankind. Sonny! Yes, detective. Calvin's fine, save me! I hope this video was helpful and that you were able to get some kind of value out of it. I love talking about movies, so I've dedicated this channel to movie reviews, movie reactions, and overall movie breakdowns and analysis type stuff. So if you did enjoy this video and you wanna see more content from me, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with the latest stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate it, guys.